And next we have our actions palette. And our scene object here in our timeline has an action associated with it. And to the left of the scene, you'll notice a le the letter A. Um, that little icon indicates that there is a, an action associated with it, which listens to um, an event on the car connection behavior called on control up. Uh, on control up is mapped to the up arrow key on the keyboard. So during a preview or during runtime, when the user presses that key, um, it'll fire that on control up event and tell the target object, which is my scene, to uh, go to a specific slide. And in this case, I'm telling it to go to slide to app right. Um, I could also tell it to go to the next slide or a previous slide. Um, and so on. Uh, another example is if I select the gear select component or double click into it, you'll notice that there are four actions set up in the actions palette here. And each of these actions is listening for um, a key press as well. Um, the on gear P event is key mapped to the H key on the keyboard. Um, the on gear R is mapped to the letter J. Um, on gear N is mapped to key K, um, and on gear D is mapped to key L on the uh, keyboard. So when those buttons are pressed on the keyboard during runtime or uh, during preview, it'll instruct my target object, which is the uh, gear select component, to uh, then go to whatever slide um, the event is associated with. So uh, if I select this component again and select the on gear R for on gear reverse and you'll notice here that me, uh, my target object is set up on gear select and the action is go to slide R. So pretty straightforward. Um, you can really set up an, an action to do almost anything and you can create custom events uh, on behaviors as well. And next I'd like to talk about our camera view. So currently, if you look along the top here, we have our edit cameras. So you can choose a 3D perspective view or a 3D orthographic view, a top-down view. Um, so right now I'm going to choose the uh, 3D perspective view. And so now if I select an edit camera view on this men in this menu, my scene navigation tools become activated along the top here. So now I'm I'm able to pan, uh, zoom in and out, and rotate about the uh, objects in my scene. Um, so I can position them and, you know, like the name implies, um, edit my objects and get a good feel for um, how they are related spatially. In my scene camera view, you can think of this as kind of your final composite. So it's rendering each camera over one, over top one another. Um, you know, so for example, the camera in my gauges layer is rendering what it sees you know, on its layer over top of the uh, 3D components layer which has its own camera. So as an example if I turn off the camera for the gauges layer you'll see that everything associated with that gauges layer disappears. And if I turn that back on and then turn off the camera in my 3D components layer you'll notice the round bezels that sit behind my gauges disappear. So this is really just rendering um, each camera, like I mentioned before, over top one another in my scene camera view. And for the most part, what you see here is what you'll get uh, at runtime or on a PC preview, save for progressive anti-aliasing, which you will only be able to see um, on the target device. So this is a good way to work and kind of get a really good sense of how everything is coming together um, you can see your lighting effects, you can see your normal maps take effect here in this view, and we just save our edit camera views for uh, when we need to move objects around a lot more easily and really tell how far apart um, certain objects are from one another to avoid camera clipping and etc.